So you've got a medical school interview coming up and you don't know where to start? I've put together five tips that I think should help based on my experience. Tip number one, plan but don't memorize. When I was planning my questions, I found it easier to bullet point general ideas rather than writing a script that I would follow in the actual interview. The reason I'm saying this is because, first of all, it's gonna be difficult to memorize everything word for word. Second of all, there's no point trying to stress yourself out and memorize something when that's not really the most important thing you could be doing with your time. Just having a general idea of what sort of points you could bring up in each question should be good enough for your preparation. For example, if I was to plan for the question, why do I want to become a doctor? I might bullet point something like, I like patient contact, I like the fundamental science behind medicine, or something like that. I would say while you're doing these bullet points as well, it's quite important to include all the different work experiences you've done, because you don't want to put those experiences to waste, and you certainly want to be including them in your interview when you can. It's also a good idea to think about which experiences will be best for which type of question. This means that you're going to be talking about all your experiences and not just using one particular experience to answer every single question. And the reason I'm saying that is because sometimes I found that I, when I was practicing, I would always talk about the same experience to answer every question. And although the interviewer might not have said it, it felt like they were getting bored of me repeating the same experience again and again. So if you're able to talk about different experiences, different things that you've done, different topics that you've read about in every question, then that's a way of keeping the interviewer interested and, you know, maybe making your interview a bit more memorable. So I know by saying just plan for every single question sounds a bit intimidating. So I thought I'd give you some general ideas of types of questions that might come up in your medical school interview. So a very common style of question is ethical scenario questions and you should pretty much be expecting that for at least one of your interviews. Not only is it common for most medical schools but it's also something that comes up in Oxbridge interviews which might be surprising when Oxbridge interviews are usually academic focused and it's definitely something that's important to consider because by doing this interview you're expected to be enrolled onto a course like medicine where you're expected to become a doctor and you'll be coming across loads of different ethical scenarios and difficult situations that you might have to deal with. So expect ethical questions. I always hated these types of questions because there is usually a right answer, which is the legal answer, but it is quite difficult to know about all the law at this point. Often you'll hear, you'll hear people talking a lot about GMC guidelines and reading the GMC guidelines, which is good if you're interested in reading about that sort of thing but for me it was something that took a lot of effort to read about. What I would recommend if you're trying to deal with the GMC guidelines is maybe have a read of the Hippocratic Oath which is sort of what the GMC guidelines are based on and it's a little bit more interesting because it's written 2000 or so years ago. Something that keeps you a bit more interested and will help you go through the GMC guidelines. And remember there's always an easy way out of ethical questions if you're stuck in a situation. What I would do is give my opinion on what I think is the right thing to do or what I think is the legal thing to do and then I would follow that up with a statement like however as I was unsure in this situation I would then consult a more senior member or refer back to the GMC guidelines before taking any action. Obviously you can't do this trick if the scenario is something like an emergency because you don't want to be wasting time referring to GMC guidelines in that sort of situation but usually in most ethical scenario questions where there's no emergency you can use that uh, as a way to just avoid falling into any traps that the interviewer is setting up. Another common type of question is career focused question. So that's usually something more personal to you and something like why do you want to become a doctor or what specialty appeals to you the most. You'll have to come up with the reasons for this question yourself based on the experiences that you've done and generally I would say the more personal you can make it the better. Avoiding things like I like to help people. Although there is nothing wrong with saying I like to help people because that is just true but if you want to keep that interviewer interested usually you know, building off of personal stories, uh, work experiences that you've done, or just things that you've seen in the media is a good way of just keeping the interview interesting. Also, if for some strange reason you get a question asking about 
what specialty you're interested in, uh, which is not very likely because at this point you shouldn't be expected to know what specialty you're going into. Either way, if you get a question like this, uh, I would say you can talk about how medicine is in fact quite a broad subject. Uh, although it might seem quite specific and you are, you know, led onto one career, there are so many different specialties and medicine gives you the opportunity to explore every single one of those before making the decision on what you need to specialize in. So you can use that as a positive of medicine to answer that question. Another type of question that you might get is also academic style questions. And as I mentioned earlier, this is something that's usually quite common for Oxbridge interviews. What you want to do with these sorts of questions is just try and understand the question using the knowledge that you already have. The interviewer knows that you're not supposed to have knowledge outside of your specification, although they might not know where you are in your specification, so feel free to correct them if you haven't studied a particular topic and the question is on that topic. In the interview you can always say, this isn't something I covered in school, however, I would think that. Usually that is the trick to these questions, just try not to say I don't know whenever you can. Even if you don't know the answer, you can say something like I'm not entirely sure, but based on the information that you've given me or using the knowledge that I have on this topic, I would say that. That's a really good sentence starter to most questions and it's also a great way to stall for a little bit so you can think about the question a bit more. But also don't be afraid to just have a minute of silence before speaking because that is also completely fine. And my second tip is know your interviewer. I know this might not be possible for everyone, you might not know exactly who will be interviewing you, but personally for my Oxford interview I got an online email so I was able to see who was going to be interviewing me on the email that they sent. If you do get to know exactly who's interviewing you, please research who your interviewer is and what research they've done. For Oxbridge interviews, most of the time you'll be interviewed by your tutors and these tutors are usually researchers. And what I found was that these researchers really do love their fields quite a lot. So they will love to talk about their topic. So usually they base their questions off of their field of research. If you don't know who exactly your interviewers are, you can always look at a college website if you're applying to Oxbridge uh, and look at a list of all the tutors and use that just to research a few of the tutors uh, and just get a bit more confident about their different research field. The reason I'm saying this is quite an important tip is because personally I was able to look at who my researcher was and before the interview I was preparing and watched this YouTube video where she was speaking about her research and that made me feel a little bit more confident and funnily enough in the interview that was the topic that came up. Now I'm not saying that you know severely helped me or you know gave me all the answers to the questions but in that moment it just felt made me feel a bit more at ease and I think that is the main goal you should be aiming for during your preparation. Although you might not be able to get the answers for every single question you will definitely be able to make yourself feel a bit more confident and at ease so when you're actually sitting in front of that interviewer you're performing at your best. My third tip would be to dress comfortably. There's no point putting a lot of effort into your outfit just to look super formal if you're going to be uncomfortable in the interview. Your main priority should be being comfortable during that interview. For certain interviews like the Oxbridge interviews they do say they don't care about what you're wearing and that is true. However I would say Sometimes it just makes you feel a little bit more confident if you look a bit more presentable, but there's no need to overdo it. For my interviews, I was doing online interviews, so I did the classic sweater on top, comfortable trousers on the bottom. I think there is also some benefit to be a little bit presentable because it shows that you care. And I know that even though interviewers might say we don't care about what you wear, subconsciously there will be some sort of views about the way you look. Although that's not the most important thing during an interview, just making sure you're comfortable and presentable should be good enough. My fourth tip is practice. You need loads and loads of practice for interviews. The first time you do a practice interview in front of someone, you'll realize how strange the experience is and how much practice you need before you'll feel confident. I would recommend trying to organize this with your school, speaking to teachers who are sort of experts in their subject. I'm sure they would love to have a little conversation about their subject because that is essentially what an interview is. If your teachers aren't available for mock interviews, 
there's always resources on YouTube. You can just Google medicine interview and you'll get loads of examples and you can listen to the example questions, answer them in your head and then listen to the example response. And that's a good way just to get used to that strange experience of sitting in an interview. You can also always use family members or friends, although they might not be experts in their subject, they will still be willing to listen. And you know, it's still quite intimidating. Being able to prepare for that is a good way of practicing. And my fifth and final tip would be confidence is key. As I mentioned earlier, there's almost no way you're gonna be able to predict exactly what they're gonna ask and make the perfect answer to that question. So the main thing you wanna be aiming for during your preparation is just feeling a bit more confident on certain topics that you think might come up in the interview, feeling confident with the strange situation of sitting in front of someone and them sort of interrogating you and being prepared to not know the answer to some questions. At the end of the day, interviews are supposed to feel like conversations, especially for Oxbridge interviews, they're supposed to mimic the style of tutorials and tutorials are just small group teaching sessions in a way. So try to learn from it if you can. Usually if you come out of the interview feeling like you have learned something, that is a good sign uh, and keep that positive mindset. So when you have the next medical interviews coming up, keep preparing and keep that momentum going. The final thing I also wanted to mention was that sometimes you might find that other people around you are getting interviews by certain medical schools and you still haven't heard back from them. The time that medical schools give you interviews usually doesn't indicate anything. If you haven't got a rejection email from them yet, that means you're still in the running for an offer. So keep that positive mindset and make sure that you prepare well for every interview. And the final, final tip that I forgot to mention was also for different medical schools, sometimes it's a good idea just to jot down something unique about that medical school that appeals to you. So just before my King's interview, I would research something about the accommodation available or just something about the research labs there that stood out to me. So if anything came up or if they said specifically why this medical school and not another one, then I could answer that question. In the actual interviews, I wasn't questioned about that, but again, it brings you back to the confidence thing and I did feel a bit more prepared if I had that little line in my head. So that's all from me. Uh, be sure to comment down below if you have any more questions because I'm sure I did forget something. See you in the next one.